run the events, workshops, community management, and marketing here at General Assembly. And I and the other women of General Assembly would like to welcome you all to Women in Tech Breakfast. So, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. I know it's a little bit early, but we do have more coffee up. Um, and you're going to get ready for an amazing panel. We have some not only beautiful women, but some incredibly brilliant and inspiring women. Um, for can I see hand, show of hands of those of you who have never been to General Assembly before? Wow! Welcome! That's great! So General Assembly is a place of higher education where you can come take classes, workshops, attend events. You can even take a full-time or part-time course on technology, business, and design. Um, I would encourage you to check out the website or go talk to someone at the front desk to ask a little bit more if you have any questions. Uh, but uh, it looks like it's time to get started, so I'm going to introduce you to Trish with Hypotamus, who's one of our uh, very dearest partners, and I hope you all have a great panel. Thank you. All right, ladies, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Is there going to be more champagne? Or <laughs> cover people like you all who are either in the tech world or looking to get into the tech world to help you find something in the startup world. Um, we cover early stage tech companies as well. So if they're launching, if they're pivoting, if they're looking to hire, we have a free job board which you all should be using if you're looking for a job in the technology world. Um, and we'll touch on all the different ways that you can find a job as well if you're looking. Um, we also have an event calendar. So all the events for this week, the General Assembly on our calendar, events all over town are on there. We aggregate about 170 different... Erin! Hi, girl! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Erin just left ATV. She's like the, the stunner in the room. Anyway, sorry, sidetracked. Uh, but with the calendar, uh, we aggregate 170 different calendars into one to make it easy for everyone to find cool technology events in Atlanta. Um, so anyway, that's about hype. Here's our panel. Um, I'm going to actually do to make this easier and not have to like hype you up in the in between. I'll just pass it down. You can introduce yourselves. 30 seconds of kind of your background and your interest in technology, and then we'll take off from there. Cool. <laughs> All right. Good morning, everyone. I'm Dana Xavier-Dajnik, and I currently work at IHG in our enterprise content strategy team. But my former life, um, I moved up the ad world and was a VP for the digital group over at VBDO and also ran the operation, digital operations for 22 Squared. Uh, interest in technology. Um, my new role has taken me sort of out of the back end website building world and into the front end content world. So um, it's been a really nice week. Um, I think there's a little bit of a segue question that goes into the, the content side of the world from the technology side, so I'll be keen to talk a little bit about more, that more on the panel. Tammy. Good morning. I am Tammy McQueen, and I lead the marketing at SalesOct. We are um, transitioned almost from not so much a startup anymore, but a company that is sort of the fastest growing SaaS company in the US. I am focused more so on the branding and the messaging of the company, more so than the technical analytical side. So I would love to share some insight about that, my interest in technology. It's, it's such an exciting time for women and so many um, entries for us, not so much just in coding or the engineering side, but it really is for branding, messaging, content, even client success, and I know Katie will share more about that as well. So I'm really excited to be here. <laughs> Hey, good morning. My name is Katie Ivey. Uh, I'm our VP of Client Partnerships at Insight Pool. Uh, we are a word of mouth marketing platform here in Atlanta. Uh, we're in a similar space. We actually used to be neighbors uh, with Tammy at Sales Loft. Uh, we both were born out of the ATV. I know there's a lot of uh, ATVers in the room. Uh, we've moved a block down the road now, and uh, Tammy's moved out as well. Uh, so we've both outgrown that space uh, a little bit. Uh, but I oversee our revenue team at Insight Pool, uh, which means I work with sales and client success. Uh, my background in technology has been primarily sales and sales leadership focused before my time at Insight Pool. Uh, I worked for a social media monitoring platform called 
Meltwater for a couple of years, ran our Atlanta uh, division. Uh, was actually my first sales job out of college and then moved kind of through a couple different management roles uh, to run their entire sales team here. Uh, and then took some time at Pardot and Salesforce uh, before moving over to Insight Pool uh, about a year ago. I think that tech is the most exciting place in the world to be, not just for women, but in general. It's a really, really incredible uh, and exciting field, so definitely excited to talk more about it. Hi, I'm Alex Kelly. Um, I'm an email developer for MailChimp, which is literally three floors up. So this was a super easy commute. Um, <laughs> I'm also the chapter co-founder of the Atlanta chapter of 100 Girls of Code, uh, which is a nonprofit organization that offers free classes to girls ages 10 to 18 to get them into code, technology, CS. Um, I'm still in college. <laughs> I don't know if I'll ever graduate. This is my third college. Uh, I'm a computer science major and a psych minor. And uh, yeah, excited to be here as well. Good morning. Um, my name is Susan Brake, and um, I am a newcomer to tech. I am actually a lawyer. I practiced law for about 13 years and um, was pretty unhappy with, um, with my law career. <laughs> And very inspired by um, the articles I'd read on big data and analytics, so um, decided to take the leap, and I'm now a student with Georgia State University's uh, Master's Science and Analytics program. I am told that I will be the first person graduating from the first person class, first person in this class, um, coming at the end of December. So. Anyway, um, we'll see where the program goes. I'm excited about it. And um, I'm also working at Juice Analytics, which is a data visualization company that makes uh, your data delicious. <laughs> That's a cute time. I just end up yelling. Okay, so I, I looked at everybody's LinkedIn. Of course, I had to stop. <laughs> Uh, and it's been really a mix of sometimes you all are consultants, sometimes you guys have worked for small companies, big companies. It's really a very large range. Um, so I'd love to kind of go down the line and touch on, you know, your experiences and how it's been different working with either for yourself or working for a big company. Um, I know when I originally started, I had a small swim lesson business, and that helped me, you know, get away through school. I worked for corporate America, which was terrible, <laughs> and then I escaped that. I escaped that by going back to school, which was amazing. Um, but I didn't like what I was studying, so I got out and like really didn't know what to do. My boyfriend told me about hypopotamus at the time. Ex boyfriend. Job sucked. He didn't. Um, but for me, like I know that the startup world is now where I'm always going to be. So I'd love to kind of hear about your experience, and, you know, being on different roles, and then especially you, you have been in like almost every role. Um, and then you know where you where you kind of found yourself the most. Well, similar to Trish, I've done a little bit of everything, as you alluded to. Um, I started on the creative side in New York many many moons ago. And Lovely story. Um, <laughs> um, I was born and raised up there. All I ever wanted to do was work in New York City. Went to art school and worked in my first job in advertising. Went to school at night um, while I worked during the day for a small ad firm up in Connecticut. But then I finally went and had you know, my big break in New York City. Um, it was a time when there was only 216 colors on the web, which some of you older folks might remember. Um, yeah, and there were those animated GIFs, <laughs> sort of now popular again, um, but that's what the web was. Uh, and I took that leap from print advertising to my first job in the web world, and it was eye-opening. I loved it, loved every second of it, um, but also realized the company that I worked, was working for was cutting edge for advertising, but at the same time wasn't really trying to push the boundaries. Um, so in New York and in Atlanta now, the opportunities are wide open. So after that ad world, um, I went to the consulting side. I work for a great company in the dot-com boom days out of Boston, and they we opened a, call it a center for design out of our New York office, and I helped grow that team there, and it was fabulous, because I learned about methodology, process, for this right brain creative person to then really leverage my left brain was like eye-opening. Um, it was wonderful to, to make that leap, um, and really see that I've got this great balance. 
butt.com. Boom, bust, uh, 2002. I opened my own little uh, design shop and uh, consulting business called Ill Imagination Studios. There's a group of three of us, a writer, a developer, and a creative, and we talked for a few years, but it was, it was 2002 to 2005, which were really low, low times. Um, but it was great for a small business because they had this opportunity to take on these smaller projects who we were nimble and being really able to do a little bit more. So it was great. Um, and then migrated over into um, the big ad world, coming down here to Atlanta. Um, I was working on an AT&T project going back and forth between New York and Atlanta every other week. My boyfriend at the time, now husband, said, you need to make a choice. He was from Minnesota. I was like, well, come check out Atlanta, see if you like it. He came down and he was like, it's like a warm Minnesota. This is great. <laughs> um, everybody's friendly, everybody's nice. Um, I said, okay, let's do it. Let's make the leap. Um, Wes Wayne, it was 22 Square now at the time, um, brought us down here and it has been the best move I could have ever made personally. Um, we got, you know, we lived in Midtown, I still had that sort of city lifestyle and walk my dog and walk to work, I put my dog, my little bulldog, would put him in this bowling bag and sneak him into the office um, and, and, you know, that was one of those funny days that would bring everybody down to an equal level. I'd have our CMO and our president like, ooh, 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 on the floor with, our dog, with my dog. Um, but it was great to just see how easy, and easy is a tough word, you know, um, easy, what I thought was easy, to make these different transitions to different phases of my life. Um, but after 22, I moved over to BBDO. BBDO is one of those places um, you work hard, you play hard, and they kind of are, are, are a tough place to have longevity. Um, it was hard work. We worked hard, and like I said, we played hard, but 12, 14 hour days uh, wasn't sustainable for me, especially as I wanted to start my family. Uh, and that's, this is when a really big shift, and I, one of the things I really wanted to talk about here was was a shift. Um, I know Cheryl Sanford's all about the lean in, let's keep it going. Um, when I had my first, uh, I got married at 37, had my first child at 38, just had another one at 41. Um, so I leaned back a little bit. I said, I need to take a step back. I went to corporate America. I went to IHG where they cherish their employees. I have never worked for a place that really really cares about their employees, wants to make sure they've got the good work-life balance, and that's what it's afforded me. I took a step back financially to go there, um, but the flexibility that that offers it is priceless. So, you know, it's been a, it's been a roller coaster uh, with lots of loops and leaps and turns, but it's been wonderful, and I'm happy to chat about all that um, in depth if anybody wants to chat more about roller coaster rides. So, same question for Tammy. You worked with schools, now you're in the startup world, which is kind of becoming more of the corporate world as it grows so quickly. Um, so kind of, you know, how did you find yourself, how did you transition to all these different things, and why have you felt that technology is where you want to land? Yeah, that's a great question. I love to talk about but I feel like such a grasshopper coming up the day later. <laughs> 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 my career. Um, interestingly enough, I went into college knowing that I wanted to be a marketing up there. My, this is pre-social media age, so um, no Facebook. I was early <laughs> into Facebook. I think a lot of us, um, Alex may have been um, in college um, when Facebook was just introduced. So um, always been. <laughs> so much over the years and it's such an interesting environment and feel that you're in because it's so agile and what I learned in college is nothing what I'm doing today and I say that often but my transition I went into school studying marketing got my master's as well with an emphasis in marketing and really thought I wanted to be in the ad world um, selling ads or media buys and it never ever went that way it really took the creative approach more to the branding, messaging side, the content, and have really found my niche in that way. And I've been a huge believer in 
working on your strengths. And instead of going a mile wide and an inch deep, find your niche and go an inch wide and a mile deep and just be so strong at what you are good at. And I've really channeled a lot of that throughout my career. So I started off um, as a marketing specialist, very much generalist in my first role. Uh, transitioned into the non-profit world of academia. That was a um, very interesting experience where you are working very closely with people. I then went into a corporate environment and became comfortable in that role. And I think that is something that we we all face in our careers is that we become comfortable in our role, we know what we're doing, we can do our jobs backwards almost without even thinking. We go into the office at 8, 9 o'clock and we pack up our bags and we leave at 5 and we face very, very little challenges. And I knew that in order to take the next step in my career, I needed to feel, you know, start getting comfortable in a very uncomfortable situation. And that is when the opportunity to join Sales Off came about and spoke with Carl Porter, our CEO. And if you've ever had an opportunity to hear him speak, you'll just feel his energy and the um, enthusiasm he breathes for the industry. And I knew this is something that I absolutely had to do. It was so scary. I was scared shitless. <laughs> Let me just tell you. And um, I knew that I would have to take this leap of faith, um, high risk, high reward perhaps you might think in the startup world. Um, and I'll be honest, on any given day I am winging it. <laughs> there are no rules um, in the startup world um, for, or playbook perhaps in marketing and it's just been a very exciting journey I would say in that I know that I function best when it is a state of absolute chaos mm -hmm. and there is so much going on and you pressure not to be able to sit and think about what you're doing and having it perfectly laid out but you have to be thinking on your feet all day every day and I think that challenges us and it really helps us rise to the to the next level and that's what's so exciting about a very agile environment in technology and I think we'll go into these questions a little bit later but uh, you know, what's attractive to women in the technology field. And it's not just about the engineering side or the coding side or the analytical side, but there's so many different segues into the industry that makes it exciting for such a diverse audience. And um, I think that it's taking that leap of faith and getting very comfortable in uncomfortable situation. I say that over and over, but it is. It's it's stepping outside of what you used to, what you're comfortable with, and it's even with the people that you work with, is pushing them and they push you to really take it to the next level. So I think that is really what's been inspiring in being in a in a startup world and having people from so many different backgrounds. Awesome. Alright so Katie I've got a different question for you. Um, you talk on your LinkedIn about team building, working with lots of different kind of people underneath one team that you put together. So from a team building perspective, when you're in a position to hire, for, I mean, for me, it's always like, you know, can I easily work with them? And usually I hire ladies because I want more women in the startup world, right? So like, if you're a woman, you got a good shot that I'll pick you up. Um, but I'm curious, you know, when you're building a team, what are you looking for from a skill set way? And like, how have you become better at building a team as you've grown? And then also, um, what's it like to have a female underling versus a male underling? And do you treat them differently? That's a lot of questions. <laughs> and I think a lot of directions I can a lot of directions I can take that. Um, so I do. I love team building. Um, I mean, my favorite thing that I've done in my career has been particularly. I would say this definitely ties into your question around having female underlings. I think that you called them. Um, <laughs> I love hiring young women fresh out of college or without a ton of experience and watching them blossom and become these empowered, amazing executives in different areas. I've had a chance. Most of my background has been in sales leadership. Um, over the last six and seven months, I've managed and, and run a client success team as well. Um, so a lot more diversity, uh, which I think it makes it a little bit tricky to answer the first question around what specifically I look for. Um, part of that does align with even the previous question around 
big company versus startup, how do you figure out kind of your niche or where you fit. Um, I worked, I spent some time in sales working for Pardot, which I'm sure most of you guys are, are probably have heard of or familiar with, and we got acquired by Salesforce not very long after I joined Pardot, uh, and I joined very much for this startup, smaller culture, and it was not necessarily a startup, but definitely a much smaller company. We had uh, I think about 250 employees, most of whom were here locally, uh, and then suddenly, literally in the blink of an eye, we were part of Salesforce, which has 10,000 salespeople and a really large, large company. Um, it was a phenomenal learning experience for me, partly to learn what I didn't actually want to be part of long term, uh, but I also learned a ton about corporate America, how big companies function, tons around structure and data and analytics and building for scalability. Um, so, so learned a lot in that role, uh, but very quickly learned that I function much better personally in a role where I feel like I uh, make a ton of impact, where I have some level of autonomy, uh, even what Tammy mentioned around functioning well in chaos. Um, I do really well in that environment as well, where I don't feel like I have a very set playbook. Um, so one of the questions that I get often from folks that are either looking to work with us at Insight Pool, um, or even just uh, even younger people that are looking to navigate those first couple of years in their career in general, is how do I know where I fit? What's going to be the right kind of long-term play for me? Usually my feedback is if you function really well in chaos, uh, if you like a lot of change, a lot of diversity, a lot of transition, then startups are an amazing place to be. If you thrive on structure and some level of predictability, then startups are not a great place for you. Uh, I've been at Insight Pool right at a year now, and we've gone through a ton of changes. Uh, we've grown really quickly, uh, but I mean even changes from a messaging perspective, and our product has changed, and we acquired a company, and we've hired a lot of folks, and we've made shifts on the executive team, um, and that can be really uncomfortable, I think, for some people that thrive in that structure or that level of predictability. Um, so for me personally, in terms of building a team now, uh, I think I mentioned I, I manage both, or I run both our sales operations as well as our client success, and those are very different skill sets. Uh, and of course, there's some level of overlap in terms of I'm always looking for high achievers for folks that have excelled in certain, you know, very even diverse areas. You know, I'm always looking for things that where people have been winners at something. Um, so often that's not academic related or even necessarily career, uh, but if they've been a phenomenal athlete or they've accomplished something or overcame uh, a particular uh, obstacle or something that's really challenging, I'm usually probing really hard to find that. That. Um, I don't know, I haven't seen a ton of success with people that came from lots of predictability in terms of knowing exactly what they wanted to do and then just being able to go through the road. So I'm usually looking for something a bit different. And then definitely a, a team player. I think even more so in a startup world where there is such diversity in terms of, I mean, there's uh, some folks in the room now that are on my team today and they can tell you they get tasked with the most unexpected uh, job descriptions and duties uh, at times that are not things that maybe they were expecting. Uh, and the ability to be somewhat nimble and uh, and pivot with that very quickly and, and take on new responsibility and put your hand up. And uh, we can talk probably all day long about the lean in versus lean back, and I think we probably have some similar opinions there, uh, but the willingness to kind of show up and put your hand up even when you don't necessarily feel qualified or like you are always the perfect person for the role, uh, I think that that's a, a phenomenal thing for, particularly for women to be willing to bring to the table. Uh, I think sometimes the confidence uh, piece is a little bit more challenging for us uh, as females, uh, so being willing to be uncomfortable and put your hand up when you don't necessarily feel qualified for something. That would certainly be when I was asked to take over our client success team at Insight Pool. All of my background had been in either sales or managing salespeople or hiring salespeople. Had no idea what you do when someone actually becomes a client. Uh, so I had to learn a lot really quickly. Uh, and we've seen a ton of success, but it was certainly probably the biggest opportunity in my own career where I had to put my hand up for something I felt very unqualified for. Um, so now I'm uh, very avid at looking for that in individuals. And I think there was four other questions, but I'm, I'm going to stop there. <laughs> And then my little champagne hat, so I can soak it up. So my next question is for Alex and Susan. Um, both of you are kind of in a... Are you saying this in the Both of you are kind of either in or going into somewhat more of a male-dominated field, right? From a marketing perspective, there's usually lots of ladies on the marketing team, which is great. Um, but with data analytics and coding, you don't find that as much. So I'm curious about the culture both at MailChimp and at Juice. Um, you know, is it 
mostly men? Is it a mix of men and women? And then kind of how does that affect the dynamic of the workplace? Well, I'm kind of a brat because MailChimp is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it is mostly dudes um, on the engineering team. I mean, how many of Mara would you say? There's like five. She's one. I'm one. <laughs> she's one of them also. Yeah, she's, and she's amazing. So. Um, but I mean, it never feels like awkward or anything. I mean, I'm lucky to work for a really awesome guy. And I mean, all the people at MailChimp are pretty cool. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's not really something that I personally have had to deal with at MailChimp, which, okay. I mean, I've heard that people do, and I kind of get that. I mean, I'm, I'm a CS major, so the, my, most of my classes are guys, too. Uh, it's just, I, I mean, I'm extremely competitive, and I think that's mostly like a male trait, so I guess I just fit in with, <laughs> yeah. with guys. I'm like, well, yeah, I mean, I like it. Um, it is competitive, I mean, with guys or with girls. Uh, if you're into it and if you're willing to just do the work and not let gender be a factor, then you'll fit in fine. I mean, if you make it like a scapegoat, like, oh, I'm a girl, I can't code, like, it's gonna be an issue. But, I mean, girls can do it too. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, culture at Juice versus culture elsewhere. Or just like the mix of yeah. who is there and do you feel like it affects the culture because it is mostly men or if it is a mix, do you yeah. yeah, I mean, I think I was the second female hire, um, and there have, has been, I think Molly's in the house here, um, she's the, the third, so we're, we're gaining ground, but, um, <laughs> and, and this is, it's, it's very small, I think there were 10 or 11 employees when I started, and they basically doubled in size um, since I've been there, um, but still quite small. Um, I have been to the other side, though, and, and Big Law, which is also male-dominated, and um, there is a remarkable difference. And it could just be my particular experience. I don't want to speak on behalf of all of Big Law. But, um, you know, a, a, a common experience was me having to leave to pick up my child from daycare, you know, and at five, with the understanding that I'd be, I'd be back online at eight, you know, and I'm burning the midnight oil. But there would be the look at the watch and the disappointed, you know, disappointed face. So there was never anything um, explicit, I would say, at Big Law, but there was just this sort of undertone of, you're not really a go-getter, you're not one of us. Um, I have not felt that at all at Juice. Um, I think that there's just this understanding that everybody has lives outside of work and that is something that you should have, <laughs> um, that there may come times when you need, for logistics reasons or what have you, some flexibility, and as long as you're working hard and getting it done, um, that's fine, and, and that really is fine, <laughs> whereas in law firms, and, and maybe it's the same with tech jobs, so they all say family friendly, work-life balance, I mean there was sort of this, yeah. <laughs> everybody said it, you know, and I just sort of said, uh, yeah, and I and I um, I, talk, I talk with the folks at Juice, and I think I have a little bit of PTSD from that because they would, they would say that, but they wouldn't mean that. <laughs> and here they actually, um, so far, I've only been there three months, but seem seem to genuinely mean it. And um, just just little things like people actually like being in the same room together. That's <laughs> new. <laughs> so um, um, you know. All things considered, I think that um, you know, being a woman is not a thing there. I think um, the under, you know, everybody has sort of struggles personally from time to time, say a sick parent or um, a, you know, a problem with the child or what have you, and I think um, that's for both the men and the women in the group that are, are a little bit older, like me, and, they, um, and it doesn't seem to be a problem. <laughs> Alright, that's all. <laughs> um, so we're talking about work-life balance and I mean there's a lot to do, especially when you're in the technology world. It's not always a nine to five, especially in startups, right? You can be living that job if you let yourself. Um, so I'm curious, you know, are you a part of te women technology groups outside of work as well? There's women, literally women in technology wit. Um, startup chicks, 
all the nerdy ladies. I mean, like, there's literally, like, a full-page list, like, a list of all the different kind of female groups around town. And as we know, one of our own here has, has started really her own kind of whoop, chair, co-founder of the section of Atlanta of 100 Girls of Code. Right. Yes. Um, so how do you manage all of this? And if you are involved in extracurricular kind of women in technology type things, how do you make time for that as well? Let's do 30 second rapid fire. Um, I did talk about leaning out a little, um, but funny enough, my second child was a little girl. And with that came a new fervor inside of me that said, I want to show her that I can do it all, right? Although it's been stressful. Um, I took a, a new role um, with my friend Karen over here at IHG in December. Um, my little one was almost a year at that point. Um, it's almost a startup within IHG because they didn't have a huge uh, focus on content. There were lots of disparate groups doing content, but now we're focusing um, our whole enterprise around what content should be. Um, so with that fervor came a renewed sense of, I need to get back out into the networking and get back into seeing what else is out there. That's how I met Gina um, at, a, at another function. And um, after this, I'm heading over to AMA to hear about more content. Um, so although I lean back for a little bit, there's going to be that ebb and flow. Um, but there's other ways that I realize that I use technology um, as a working mom to my benefit. Instacart, fabulous. If you don't use it, use it. Um, nobody ever needs to take two children to the grocery <laughs> store ever. Um, you know. <laughs> um, Amazon Prime, another one, right? There's just these little tips and tricks that, you know, when you're a busy person, you don't just have to be a mom. There's little things that you can do to make your life easier. So um, I know that was a little off topic. Male but butler, yeah. little guy. <laughs> for everything in everyone's life um, and, and only you know what that is so you just need to own it and figure out how it works or it doesn't um, and, and just own it so yeah. I am a huge believer that you can do everything but not at the same time <laughs> um, also I, I really don't ascribe to the work-life balance whatsoever <laughs> I like to think of it as a mashup and a full life. So do what inspires you and what, what you're passionate about all at the same time. But it, it, it's not, you can't compartmentalize your life. You can't say, this is my work life, this is my work self, this is my home self, this is my socializing self. It doesn't. I'm a huge believer that all of that just blends to make a full life. And that's where I found myself to be it sort of in my sweet spot is having a full life where yes, I go to work and this is my work time, but if I need to hop on a call at noon to the non-profit board that I serve on in Rwanda because it's evening there, I'm going to do that and um, you know, after that I'll get back into the swing of things with work if my team needs to go to the doctor, take their dog to the vet. That's just part of life and it makes for that full life where you cannot segment your life. And in terms of networking, I am a huge fan of being involved in the community, giving back to the community. And that's such a cliche that you're going to give back to the community, but it's being present at a lot of these technology events, non-profits, and it's giving your skills back. And I'm not so much involved with a lot of women in technology events or startup checks, I attend the events, but I've really put my focus in the nonprofit world where I'm on the nonprofit for the Cooler Project, which helps farmers in developing nations, but I use my skill set in that role. So I use the marketing that I do in my everyday life to help 
spread the word or the messaging, do fundraising for the non-profit, or the rhino conservation in South Africa is fighting poachers um, against rhinos. And it's not directly technology, but using the skills and transitioning those. So it's finding what you're good at, but putting it into something that impassions you. And giving that opportunity to folks that wouldn't necessarily have access to a lot of these um, skill sets or the entrepreneurs or your own network. So take your network that you have built from a lot of these um, networking events or technology um, industry type events and put that into something that you're passionate about. I don't think it needs to be segmented or you know, cut off by what you don't do on the daily So I'm all about a full life. <laughs> I would like to go not go after Tammy anymore because I just want to repeat everything that she said. I think we're far too similar. Uh, I won't repeat it all, uh, but I agree 100%. I am very much about work-life blend. Uh, I think that I've always loved working. So in terms of like feeling like I was working too hard or being too focused, I really, really enjoyed my job today probably more than any job I've ever had. But I've always really thrived in a work environment. Uh, another reason that I'm so passionate and I love working for startups, uh, in particular the startup that I work for right now, uh, is I absolutely adore the people that I work with. Um, so my, my husband and I are very purposeful at doing life together. Um, but I have very much pulled him into, I mean, I consider my work life to, and my social life to be very much one and the same. Uh, and of course, I've pulled in lots of random groupings from others uh, that I don't work with into that group. But we hang out and socialize and party with the people I work with a lot. Uh, and so I've been very purposeful at connecting those, uh, but because I want to be all in, in particular in my work life right now, uh, I'm managing the largest team that I've ever managed, so I want to spend as much time as I can with those guys, uh, and a lot of that needs to happen outside of work, uh, but it doesn't feel like work to me. Uh, so that's probably the only other thing that I would add, uh, and I think I know Tammy in her personal life does some very similar things as well, uh, but I've been very kind of uh, on purpose really tying those two pieces together um, so that I am able to kind of feel very much invested, um, but like I'm throwing everything that I have into my career pretty much day and night and weekends. And now we have a school in the mix for our last panelist. Let's hear my um, yeah, I like to be busy. So I work full-time at MailChimp. Uh, the Girls Who Code thing, I didn't expect it to be a full-time thing, but it definitely is. Uh, and then also college, which I struggled just doing college by itself, and I was like, oh wait, <laughs> I'll do these other full-time things as well. Um, so there's not much of a social life, per se, but I mean, I have fun at work, so I guess I didn't know that I was down for the work-life blend, but I am, so. <laughs> Really, I subscribe to that as well because there is no like compartmentalizing. It's all one big thing. So, okay, well, if the cool kids are doing that, uh, then I'm doing that now. So, um, but yeah, I, there's a lot of great. I mean, if people are looking into getting into like women in tech kind of groups, there's like a ladies who UX crew. Uh, I get their emails, but I never have time to go to any of their events. Uh, but they look awesome, and then uh, there's like a ton of them here. So. We have a list on my bottom. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Shameless plug. Yeah. Um, so, let's see. Um, doing, so, it doing it doing all. Doing it all. Good I'm going to give a shout out to um, some segmentation in your life. <laughs> because um, just from my experience working, I. I could very easily be a workaholic, and you get a lot of um, pats on the ass from working, you get money from working, you get a lot of, um, not literal, pats on the ass. Just, you get praise, and praise feels good, and so you want to do more of it. Um, Taking care of my kids, I love them to pieces, but they don't praise me. They're hugs. They're hugs. Yes, hugs are nice, but there's um, there's no money. Um, there's no promotion. Tomorrow's gonna be the same as yesterday in terms of you know 
the, and, you know, I love them, but there's some drudgery. You gotta make the dinner, you gotta buy the groceries, you gotta do the baths and get the, you know, there's just stuff. So, um, very difficult for me, at least, to find a way to blend the taking care of the kids. And now, I have a sick mom at home, so that plus work. I sort of have to set aside time for the working and then the not working. And that seems to work for me. So I think that, um, and, and it's just an age and stage thing. Like I remember right before I found out I was pregnant um, with my first child, like two days before, I, I said, you know, I'm really gonna, I'm gonna go for this partner thing. I'm just gonna go for it. I'm gonna go all in and try to be a big law partner. And, um, and then I thought I was pregnant. And all that changed in ways I would never have been able to imagine at, the, at, at that time. Um, I still have the drive, I just, um, I'm just tired. <laughs> and, I have, um, and I have, I have other things that are, um, I need to do, they're important to do, I do love doing them, um, but uh, if I let myself just soak up um, all the encouragement and praise from work, I would fill up all of my time with that, and, and that's not fair to the other people in my life. So anyway, just one little shout out for <laughs> boundaries. <laughs> Uh, my next question is going to be on female and male mentors. Well, at this point, <laughs> um, female and male mentors. So I know that when I first started out, I was always looking for a female mentor because I figured she would like understand me in ways a male mentor couldn't, right? But then as I've worked my way through the startup community, I've really found that a lot of my champions are men. And granted, there's more men in the startup community, so it's just the way it might be, right? Um, but really, I found that the, my male relationships, the, uh, my, my male mentorship relationships, um, have really been the ones that have, you know, offered me the really big gigs or introduced me to, you know, the CEO of Mailchimp, whatever it is. Um, so, do you have a male or a female mentor, and kind of what is that? How did you find that person, and what have they done for you? Thirty seconds. I will let somebody else start. <laughs> <laughs> I am working on that. Um, Thirty seconds. Oh my! Um, I, I, mean, I have a lot of mentors. A lot of people who've helped me uh, with my career. And um, the person that comes to mind right now is Dr. Harold Ball at uh, GSU's Institute for Insight. He's amazing, and in, um, in terms of getting people connected, and he's one of those people. You know, he's like the hub of the wheel. He just seems to know everybody and um, and is interested in seeing other people succeed, which is, you know, I think kind of a rare thing. I think we just sort of get, not that we're jerks, but we get focused on our own lives and don't really think about pulling somebody else, you know, up along with us as much, um, but he does. And in terms of um, female versus male, I've had both. I've also had some bears of both genders that I've worked for. Um, and... Uh, think I'm out of time, but. <laughs> 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 I guess two mentors. This is only my second like big girl job, uh, so <laughs> whatever. Um, but my boss now is awesome. He's a dude, um, and he's like completely changed the way that I write code and the way that I talk to people. And he's been pushing me to do stuff like this, which is terrifying for me because I'm really good at computers and not very good at talking. Um, so. <laughs> and then uh, there was a guy named Chris Harrison um, at my last job. Uh, he wasn't my boss or anything. He was just someone that I worked with. He was my desk mate. Um, and he's a super cool dude. He uh, really changed my outlook on tech. I used to think, you know, you just go to work, you do your stuff, you go home. Um, and he showed me just like this whole community of people that were like super accepting and like wanted to help you learn stuff. And I wouldn't have just branched out on my own and done like the social tech scene. Um, so he really opened my eyes to that, and yeah, he's a guy. So two guy mentors, and they're two both guys so far. awesome. Huh? Two guys so far. So far, so far. Still looking for a female mentor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've had a couple of mentors throughout my career, all of which have been men. Um, one thing that I've been very purposeful at recently, and this is really thanks to our CEO, who is a man, uh, the first lunch that we had after I took the position uh, was him sitting down saying, like, 
how specifically can I help you over the next few months? What are you looking for? Why did you come to Insight Pool? Uh, he knew that I had taken a, a, a massive salary cut, and made some sacrifices, but really was on board long term for what we were building at Insight Pool. Uh, so he very much made himself available to be a connector, similar to what you're, what you're talking about with your mentor. Uh, and he's very, very well connected, so he had a lot of open doors that he was able to kind of pull me into. Uh, and what I told him is, hey, I would love to get connected with some influential uh, women in leadership in some different fields. Uh, and he has delivered 100% on that over the last year. We have some pretty incredible ladies uh, on our advisory board, uh, current ex-CEOs of massive uh, companies. So he's been able to open some great doors. I don't know that I would call either of the mentors at this point, uh, but I've gotten a lot of face time, asked a lot of questions. Uh, I mean, even over the last six months, as my team has grown, I've been very purposeful at uh, picking uh, her brain in terms of how specifically, tell me more about how you run your one-on-ones with this caliber of individuals, what types of questions, how do I create consistency? Uh, and it's definitely, I've, I've grown more as, as a female leader, I think over the last six months, uh, probably than ever in my career because of those introductions. All right, I'm going to bring a little Tina Fey into the mix here. <laughs> you are not competing against women only. You're competing against everyone. So I think it's important not to look at female versus male mentors, but to find someone who's going to champion for you and to fight for you and to provide you with unsolicited advice, whether you want to hear it or not, and to really prepare that pathway for you and to show you what's best for you and has your best interests at heart. I have had, when we're looking at this, um, both a female and a male mentor, and they provide such different perspectives on my career. And I, I think that they balance each other out very well, so I look at them both for advice on different areas. In terms of my current role, um, I like to think of Kyle Porter, our CEO, and Rob Porter, our CEO, as women and um, also their mentors because they're working in the trenches every single day for me. And I have this 100% trust in, um, in those two leaders and look at them for advice. And they've taught me one of the biggest things that I've learned in my career, and that is having vulnerability. And it, it, it's not my strongest seat right now, but it's actually letting your guard down and saying, I don't know what's going on. Can you help me? And asking for help because I'm this one that like, wants to be Wonder Woman and just tackle everything and do everything and figure it out. Um, and so that's really been very helpful. And they've been in every single day sort of as, as women, cheerleaders, and I think that's important to have as well. So it's very connected into your everyday as well as having your mentors that are watching from afar. Shifted for okay. Or do you want uh, to uh, 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 question? Uh, uh, I'm going to move on to my questions. Um, you know, we're talking about mentorship, um, but I think a, a underlying, um, really big piece of my life has been the, the support team that I have. I'm a breadwinner of my family, and my husband supports that. He's not a stay-at-home dad by any means, but he supports what I need to do. Um, I moved here, I have no family here, but my community, my grandpa community, um, <laughs> it's amazing, right? Um, we've got 30 kids under five on our three block street, and I can reach out to any of those moms at any point in time. Um, I share that needing that support system because that makes you better at everything else you need to do. Um, Whereas a mentor can help guide you and, and push you and um, really, you know, make you feel uncomfortable and, and tell you those more difficult things, you also really need that support system. So I, I can't stress that enough. Um, I have lots of great mentors as well, um, but I really wanted to touch on the support side. Sure. Um, well, I think we've only got like five minutes left, so we'll kind of we'll finish that. Is anyone here looking for a job or looking to do something new from their current job? One. The one gentleman who's here. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the, um, so when you're looking, when you landed your dream jobs, right? Especially you, because I don't know how you landed the job. Like literally everyone I talk to, because I do like mentor a lot of folks, or I meet with them, like they're like, this is exactly what I want to do, and I'm like. I can't get you into MailChimp. Like, I've sent so many emails over to MailChimp, and I know a lot of people work there. But it's extremely difficult to get your foot in the door, especially a company that's that large, and Cardiff Linux is here, and 
I mean, it's impressive, right? And Jews as well. Uh, so I'm curious, you know, how did you how did you really find your job? We'll start with start with you, and then we'll kind of circle around. Yeah, that's okay. good. Story. It is a pretty okay. Story. <laughs> Don't get too excited. Uh, so I assaulted my boss at a conference. Uh, <laughs> I just brought my, he was speaking at the conference, and I uh, brought my computer, because I knew he would be there. <laughs> I drove all the way to Charleston from Augusta, Georgia, um, and I opened my computer and put it in front of him, and I was like, hey, so, <laughs> I've been writing emails for a year and a half. Uh, I do not have a degree. I have only had one job in technology. This is my code. Is it shit? <laughs> like, and he was like, actually, this is awesome. Uh, how long have you been doing this? I was like, yeah, like a year and a half. And he was like, okay, I want you to come in for an interview. So, yeah, I just, and I almost threw up on his shoes. <laughs> I was extremely nervous. Um, I mean, I followed him on Twitter, and he's like really grumpy on Twitter. It's just <laughs> he's super nice in real life, but on Twitter he's like really grumpy. Uh, so I was like, I'm gonna go up to this stranger who's like bitterly sarcastic and is literally like an email god, and I'm gonna go up and talk to him with no experience and be like, please give me a job. Like, and it worked. So I was aggressive and. And it, it worked. So, yeah, I mean, if you want something, just do it. I mean, the worst that they can say is, like, no, and then I would just go back to Augusta and keep wearing tights to work. Because <laughs> we had to do that. That's <laughs> what so happens if you work for a 150-year-old family-owned company. Um, but, I, yeah, if you want something, just go. I mean, what are they going to do? Say no? Like, that's, I mean, it would have been a little harder. But um, I was not prepared to accept no as an answer. Maybe that's what it was. Makes sense that, I'm sure. Yeah, all right. Katie, same question for you. How did you land this gig? How did you find How did you find your way up through this? So mine is a little bit of a different experience. Um, they went after me for a little while. Uh, we had one of our, uh, Inside Pools is a really small company. We've been around for about three years. Uh, but a BDR that had worked with me at Pardox uh, had left Pardox to go and be the first sales rep over at Inside Pool. Um, so I knew him fairly well. Um, and Inside Pool was really going after very much the social media marketing space, but as well as one of folks that understood marketing automation. Um, so Devin, our CEO, called me a unicorn when I finally took the job because I had a background in both social and marketing automation uh, and then a lot of leadership experience. So my mind was a little bit different. I was quite selective and not really on the hunt for a new gig. Uh, so I did drinks with them a couple times. I did coffee. I basically made friends with the, the two co-founders and then the current CEO um, and was quite selective about the time that I was willing to leave Salesforce to, to take a big risk on a smaller company. Um, Yes, I think my story is a little bit less interesting in terms of how I got there. Uh, in terms of working my way up, I think I, I, mean, I mentioned it before. I put my hand up. I said yes to everything. Uh, things that were very outside. I mean, things that related to culture and HR and client success. Uh, stuff that had nothing to do with what I was doing day in and day out. I, mean, I think it was my fourth day on the job. We had a bunch of our investors in, um, and our CEO asked me to come and talk about some of our sales training, which I wasn't running the sales training. Of course, I didn't have much idea what we were doing. I was still learning how the product itself actually worked, but I said yes, and of course I was the only female in the room, so I made jokes about being the only female in the room. Um, so it was just lots of kind of saying yes to every opportunity um, that's kind of opened the door for me to take on a lot more responsibility pretty quickly. Keep it going. I think we're done. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies. Well, thank you so much for coming out. We've got Tanisha's going to kind of walk us to the next part of this, and then we'll open it up for Q and A. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start our session. That's going to be a little more deeper dive into women's issues and technology.